the ribs and the rosary shown in the image got something to do with rickets which we will discuss later and today we will discuss on imaging in rickets the key words which we will discuss are mineralization of osteoid the growth plates plain x-ray findings of rickets and the healing rickets rickets is an interruption of the development and mineralization of the growth plates or it is a defective mineralization of the osteoid what is osteoid it is an unmineralized bone tissue which will later get calcified and deposited to form the bony matrix so an immature skeleton is affected by rickets or a growing skeleton of children is affected by rickets and the manifestations are more prominent in the growing ends of bones. Rickets is primarily caused by a vitamin D deficiency or an abnormal metabolism of vitamin D associated with a renal disease. Coming to the pathological changes. Where is the osteoid seen? It is formed in the growth plate. During my UG days, I used to wonder, what is this growth plate, metaphysis, diaphysis, epiphysis? So I'll give a briefing on these parts of a bone. This is a typical long bone and the shaft of the bone. This is known as the diaphysis and the diaphysis will widen on towards the ends and this forms the metaphysis. Metaphysis. Adjacent to the metaphysis in this region. This is the physial plate or growth plate. And it is this region where the osteoid is formed. I told you osteoid is unmineralized. So in an x-ray, the unmineralized bone is seen as a radiolucent line or a dark line which is seen towards the ends, growing ends of the bone. So this is the growth plate and adjacent to it is the above, above the physis is the epiphysis. Epiphysis. And this is the growth plate. So what will happen in rickets? Normally, this growth plate will be seen as a thin line which will be about a, a 2 to 4 millimeter width in a normal x-ray as a radiolucent horizontal line adjacent to the metaphysis. And the rate, uh, this growth plate meets with the metaphysis as a thin zone of thin smooth line adjacent to the metaphysis. This is known as the zone of provisional calcification. So these are the areas where a change occur in rickets. What happens in rickets? The osteoid will be unmineralized. More and more osteoids will be formed from the growth plate and pushed towards the metaphysis. But this will not be mineralized, so these are seen as radiolucent area in an X-ray. So the growth plate will appear, this is the normal width of the growth plate and this will appear widened, widened in an X-ray. And what happens to the metaphysis? Normally there is a thin border between the growth plate and the metaphysis which is sclerotic. This is a zone of calcification and calcification is defective. So the zone of provisional calcification will be absent and this is the one of the earliest sign in rickets. Zone of mineralization will be absent. So the border of metaphysis with the uh, growth plate will be irregular, ill-defined. This is known as the Fraying, fraying of metaphysis. Metaphysis will be frayed, and the pushing of the osteoid onto the metaphysis will result in a cup like deformity of the metaphysis, and the metaphysis will be widened towards a side or plate, will be seen towards the sides. This will be the appearance of the metaphysis. Fraying and Splaying of the metaphysis, growth plate will be widened and above the growth plate will be the epiphysis which will also be of less density due to poor mineralization. So the epiphysis will be ill-defined. This is what occur in rickets and this will help you to mention all the radiological findings in rickets easily. Coming to the radiographic findings, as I have told you, the earliest manifestations will be those areas where the growth is maximum. So around the wrist and around the knee joint in children. So to screen a patient with for the rickets, we go for x-ray of the wrist and the knee. Both AP and lateral views will be taken. Also of use will be the skull x-ray which will show early findings especially in an infant. We will learn the uh, features of rickets from head to toe. So for your exam, you can easily recollect these uh, during your exams. From the head to toe, the findings will be, there will be a short stature of the baby. And for the skull, it is known as craniotapes 
or the ping pong skull. The skull will be soft with areas of unossification of the membrane skull bone and the skull will be malleable to finger pressure. This is known as the craniotypes. Associated with, the, with that will be bossing of the skull. The frontal bone will be bossing, the parietal bossing and there will be flattening of the occiput because the baby will be in a lying down position and the pressure causes a flattening of the occiput. This will result in a box shaped skull and coming down there will be delayed dentition. Further downwards the chest will be pigeon chest. The ribs which are softened will be drawn inwards by the respiratory muscles and the sternum will be pushed outwards will be resulting in a pigeon chest deformity. Another thing which I told you about is the rackety grocery. The anterior ends of the ribs will be rounded or bulbous because of the increased unmineralized osteoid at this side and this will be seen all around looking like bulbous round areas known as the rackety grocery. This is the craniotapes. Here there the anterior fontanella is unfused but even after the one and a half years of age and this is a characteristic and the skull bone will show bossing and decreased mineralization. This is the rachitic rosary. The anterior ends of the bones will be bulbous. This will result in a rosary seen all around the chest. Uh, coming down towards the extremities, the growth plate and metaphysis. I have already told you the growth plate will be widened and the metaphysis will be frayed and splayed. This will result in a paintbrush appearance of the metaphysis and the growth plate will be widened. This is the epiphysis. Irregular and frayed metaphysis, splaying of metaphysis giving the appearance of a paintbrush metaphysis. This is the growth plate widened. This is a normal knee joint with a normal thin growth plate with adjacent zone of calcification. In rickets, the growth plate is widened and the zone of calcification is lost. The zone of calcification is not well seen here and there is ill-defined borders of the metaphysis. The metaphysis due to the pressure of the osteoid will become cup-shaped, cupping of the metaphysis. This is the fraying or irregular metaphysis and which is splayed, splaying of metaphysis. Coming to the changes in the epiphysis, epiphysis will be delayed in appearance. Why delayed? Because epiphysis is not ossified or mineralized. So it will not be seen in x-rays. So there is delayed appearance of the epiphysis and the epiphysis when it is formed will be of low density due to osteopenia. Osteopenia will be there and the borders of the epiphysis will be ill-defined, irregular borders. What happens to the shaft? The shaft is also showing decreased bone density. The shaft is rarefied and the cortex will become thin and coarse. And further weight bearing on the shaft will result in a bowing of the bones and can even lead on to fractures. This is the epiphysis which is ill-defined and the borders are irregular and the shaft is also rarefied here. Further continued deficiency of vitamin D or abnormal mineralization will lead on to deformities due to weight bearing of these soft bones. This will result in genuvarum. This is the bowing of the knee joint, bowing at the knee joint known as the genuvarum or it can result in a knock knee or genuvalgum. At the hip it can result in coxa vara or coxa valga which is an increase or decrease between the, the femoral neck and the femoral shaft. So it can lead on to coxa vara or coxa valga. Another deformity is there will be indrawing at the lower border of the uh, ribs because of the uh, attachment of the diaphragm slips and it will pull on these and it will uh, it will be indrawn. This is known as the Harrison sulcus and the pelvis will be softened and the acetabulum will be protruding into the pelvis. This is known as protrusio acetabuli. Along with the protrusion of acetabuli, the spine can also project into the pelvis. This three can result in a triradiate pelvis. This is the bowing of legs and this is a triradiate pelvis. Coming to healing of rickets, the beauty is x-ray is even useful, also useful during the treatment and to know the response to treatment also in rickets. But radiography usually lags behind the biochemical or clinical improvement by at least two weeks. So what we do is an x-ray will be repeated at four weeks and we look for the line of sclerosis on the metaphyseal side because the zone of calcification, zone of provisional calcification which I told you will be mineralized with treatment of rickets. 
So this uh, zone of fractional calcification mineralization will be seen as a line of sclerosis on the metaphyseal side. If this is not seen at four weeks, the norm is like you can repeat the same dose again for the treatment. And another thing is this zone of fractional calcification which will reappear on treatment will be separated from the rest of the metaphysis by a thin line of osteoid which is unmineralized. So this will stand out and this is known as Harris growth arrest line. This will be persisting even after the growth plate fusion and in the later ages of that patient X-ray will show this Harris growth arrest line as a sign of old rickets. This is a growth arrest line, a Harris growth arrest line. Coming to the questions you may encounter, our imaging in rickets itself is a short note. We will discuss a few MCQs too. The radiological appearance of rickets include all except fraying, cupping, slaying. All these are seen but pelkin spur is not a feature in rickets. MCQ2 Earlier manifestation of rickets is craniotapes that are seen in infancy in a skull bone which is not fused. Bracketing rosary, Harrison groove and PJ and chest are seen in a bit more older children. So craniotapes is the answer. That's all about imaging in rickets. Thank you. Dokumenting.